Anaki, friends, you can understand my limitations. I'm not carrying any classroom notes. I'll be just speaking extempore. Uh, I think this subject is important because uh, uh, we are finding different definitions of nation. Some definitions are not definitions, they are simply unwarranted judgments that we know nations, you don't know. So you have to act according to our understanding of nation. So I get uh, this uh, judgment in Munirka, I get this judgment in, on the Facebook. A, a, a wrestler is asking questions, he's, he's written a poem on uh, how bad things are happening in JNU and the whole nation is in danger. <laughs> so this is a serious problem that uh, 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 no, we, we, we are actually being uh, confused about the very idea of nation. On the other hand, how does one really understand nation, our nationalism? Is it something which belongs to emotions where easy, free-floating judgments are available, people of any kind can make judgments on JNU students and teaching faculty and non-teaching faculty? as if we don't understand nation, they only understand nation. So one argument is coming, one, one response is coming from emotions where there's no argument. Now the other response is from here. All of you are gathered here and I don't know whether I should really speak to you because you already, you, you know, you, you belong to the sphere of argument. Nation and arguments are very closely tied to each other. And therefore you, you have to really offer a very reason deep response to the idea of nation and this has to be uh, this has to be taken forward and we have to work not only within ourselves but also in the society because people are being misled that what is nation is some some very very devilish construction of the other can you really define nation in terms of constructing the other who is uh, problematic you cannot i mean it will be uh, it, it, I mean, if you constructing nation, constructing nation in terms of constructing the other as a devilish other would be actually very, very dangerous. And it will only invite some kind of a takeover by the fascist forces. So I think we have to really go with serious thinking about nation. Now, uh, if I am arguing out with you, what, what is the basis of my argument? How do I understand nationalism and nation? Sorry? Okay. Uh, so, how do I understand nation? For understanding nation, I have to first of all ima imagine nation. Excuse me. Imagining nation and people are written, I don't want to really quote the scholars. This is not the, this, though it is a class, but I don't want to quote uh, the scholars who worked on nation nationalism. Nation has to be imagined as far as I can understand in terms of the promises the nation is making and the aspiration it is actually uh, offering, to the, offering to the people. So in 1947, we were actually offered, the, the idea of nation offered promises to us and actually aspire, offer also aspirations to us. Now what was the promise? The promise was to really create a decent nation. Nation which is based on not rumors, not insecurity, not any kind of uh, indignity, humiliation. I mean, people right from the, I mean, right from this whole, uh, start, uh, the, the, uh, the, the agitation started on the campus, we are being seen as somebody who is not fit for staying in this country. There is a growing stigmatization. <coughs> you can't build nation on this notion of stigma. Look at, I mean, you are actually, I mean, those who are actually stigmatizing our community on the campus are actually billeting our scholarship. It is a different thing that we don't require certificate from them. But the, but the promise is to really build nation on decency, some kind of a decency. Are we doing that? And to really build that decency, we have made some provision in the Indian constitution. So there is a close 
connection between Indian constitution and nation, which we imagine as a decent nation. Now, what are we aspiring for? We are aspiring for there should be uh, all kinds of asymmetries be eliminated from within the country. Okay. Now, what is the what is what is what are what are the asymmetries? For one of the asymmetries is India all said and done is actually practically, sociologically, emotionally divided. We have one India which is Puraskrut India, the other India is the Bahiskrut India. And I'm taking from Ambedkar. Our nation has to be evaluated on its moral capacity to really eliminate the divide between the Puraskrut and the Bahiskrut. Are we asking question to ourselves that after 67 years of independence, we have not been able to get Dalit Vardas into mainstream. There is other India, the Bahiskrut India. So, the aspiration to bring India together in terms of this, in terms of eliminating this divide is important. And therefore, we have to, we have to, uh, we, we, we have to uh, interrogate or evaluate nation on the basis of its moral capacity to breathe this gap. We don't need to borrow resources from outside. We don't need to borrow the resources outside. We have resources here in this country. If you look at the idea of Chakra, Ashok Chakra, Honor Triyanga, Tricolor flag, this is one kind of very radical symbolism that the nation has incorporated into its own imagination. <coughs> what is this radical symbolism that has been the part of our nationalist imagination is Ashok Chakra. And if you really interpret it in terms of its hermeneutic capacities, you will find that the nation has to be revolved, has to be made radical in terms of actually changing face, changing spaces. In the sense that, you know, some people, I mean, some people are scavengers here. They are sanitary workers. They should go up radically. And those who are actually, everybody has to do that work. So there's a need for radical rotation. The way you look at the dynamism of the chakra, every blade in the chakra has to go up and come down. And it is rotation. What a powerful symbolism we have got in terms of this uh, chakra. And we have, we, have, we, we have to insist on the state to see that this chakra actually acquires that required dynamism, dynamics. We as young scholars of this university has to ask the political class to what extent they have actually pushed this mechanism ahead and facilitated, facilitated this rotation and achieved this radical dynamism that is entailed in the chakra. This is one important symbolism that can actually defeat other symbolisms. Now, for example, we have nationalism which is interpreted, articulated in terms of symbolism. And we have a very strong symbolism of Mother India. Is it not? So you have a choice. Which symbolism is stronger? Mother India symbolism or a chakra symbolism? That's it. It's a samta chakra. It's an egalitarian. So, so, the, so the nation has to be based on this kind of a, some kind of egalitarianism. And that is there in uh, our Indian constitution and in our, uh, uh, our philosophy of Buddhism. Now, the point that was being raised uh, uh, in teachers' unions meeting, what is the relationship between nation and state? Is there a relationship which is important? I think the nation with benign forms, benign take as we have mentioned, that you know, nation, nation cannot really downgrade, cannot really treat some people as second class citizen. 
and they and so uh, so nation nation is the i mean if you really want to frame your question within nation there are scholars who do not want to frame the questions in nation they are gone beyond nation post nationalism all that but that's a debatable point academic point we can take it up later but to uh, what is important for us to really and for a ground the normative character of nation and to that extent i would say we still required to really pitch up your argument within the normative frame of nation and i am to that extent a nationalist because i want a nation which is normative in character which doesn't really treat people badly now if you really want to sustain and promote harness this essence of nation which is normative nation cannot do it on its own does it do it on, on its own no i'll just wait for the aircraft to pass so so nation cannot nation is an abstract category as i mentioned you cannot nation cannot be defined in terms of the borders alone and the physical character of nation and that is what people do i mean that is the dominant definition that they pick up that dominant character of the nation they pick up because that is easy for them to construct the other the border is a very very important uh, you know weapon in the hands of those who want to create the other beyond the border and that other is all the time transgressing boundaries therefore you are actually taken for a right to look at this that i am not taking on into consideration what is important in terms of understanding nation is this essence as to how it really actually deals with question of poverty question of casteism question of gender we have never understood nation also has a very deep patriarchal angle to it when the question of caste was being debated outside the nation in durban the government of india said look here it is a internal question it's a family question nation is given a patriarchal color so there is a head sitting on the at the top that patriarchy patriarchy is very, very fair in his intention and his intention only and he will give you justice so don't take this caste question to the international fora so there is a deep patriarchal angle to nation okay just there is a mother mother india patriarchal angle there is also other other angle to it what we are interested today as the thinking being as argument i think this is argumentative collectivity it is not emotional collectivity it is argumentative collectivity therefore our responsibility is to really keep this argumentative capacity intact and and, and and also enhance it therefore i would always request you when it is a class going on um slogans are always needed but in classes there are no slogans needed because you are an argumentative being you are an argumentative being where slogans are important but not immediately urgent okay so i i hope you understand this point uh so uh, so so the question is to maintain this normative essence of the nation who will do it it is the state the state has to play a very supportive role through the indian constitution and legal <coughs> interventions we are skeptical about all this uh legal and para uh, and the bureaucratic and the police thing uh, as it is unfolding itself in terms of very very undefendable uh, bias but you have to actually defend this essence of nation through constitution and state the point that we have to remember here is if the state is becoming overriding our nation what happens today it is being seen as state is becoming much more prominent than the nation but for your own reasons you are actually trying to define nation one political party is trying one government led by one political party is thinking that this politics of that party is much more important than the this nation so there is a there is a serious problem if it is a welfare state 
state which is responsible about the future of this benign nature, nation, then that state has to take plebiscite on every day. I mean, Nimedita is going to speak about this. We do not ask question, how many, of, how many of us really exist within the nation? How many of us are really visible within the nations? How many of us are claiming nation? Do we have any kind of moral authority to claim this nation? Do we relate ourselves to the nation? Is the question. So if when, when you are deviating from nation, it is the duty of the state to see that you actually connect yourself to nation through invoking everyday plebiscite. But here the situation is different. Instead of asking question to, uh, the, uh, to itself, the state is actually uh, framing people. State is framing people, and that is much more serious. I mean, you should really have, you should have your duty, your responsibility to see that you actually perform a national interest. And that national interest is not militarization. National interest to see that people are not hungry. They don't commit suicide. Farmers don't commit suicide. What kind of nation are you talking about? You don't ask questions to yourself. So you are actually, in a way, deviating from your own responsibility, constitutional responsibility. So there is a threat, there is a, there is a, there is a tension between nation and state. A state is becoming much more powerful than the nation. So I think for a very, I mean, I'm, I'm going to, I'm, I'm suggesting already that should we really re, re, recover nation? And in order to make a recovery of nation, you have to fight all the residual liabilities. And one liability is patriarchy. One liability is patriarchy. We have not been able to really deal with this problem. There are several others. I mean, I just remember Rohit, Rohit Vemula's uh, uh, poem, the last two, three lines. And you should think about it. It's a very profound line that if the nation is creating white, emptiness in your life, what kind of nation I'm living in? What is that white, what is that emptiness in, 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 in Rohit Vemula? That he's, he was known as a star on his caste certificate. People knew Romila, oh, sorry, Rohit Vemula as somebody who only has been reduced to star. That a stitch mark on this, in Hyderabad University, you don't mention your caste, what you mention is your star. If it is ST1, then ST2 stars. And he was actually fed up with this star. Okay? And therefore he said, I am fed up with this star that are actually labeled against me. I want to join other stars. I am not happy with these stars. I want to join the stars in the sky. A profound line. This is a very tragic line he is talking about. But in this kind of country, if somebody is actually celebrating the white, it is a reflection on civil society, and which has issued nationalism differently. What is your actually responsibility? And that's why I am saying this, because civil society on the campuses needs to be, uh, needs to be really civilized which is not the case. So I think the role of this bureaucracy, state and all that has to really respond to these aspirations of the nation uh, by really taking its own job seriously, which it is not taking, I guess. And therefore, uh, there, is a, this, this a, there is a tension between state and nation. Now, there is another point that we have to keep in mind. So what is the relationship between government and state? Are they same or they different? It's a bit boring academic point, but I have to make this point. <laughs> uh, because I keep making this point, but this is a boring point, but please bear with me. And uh, this is, Prabhat, you have to help me. Uh, this is, uh, again, al uh, State is an essence. 
and government is its existence. What we see in court is an existence. What is the essence of the state? Essence is something like this. See, you are, it's a nicho, nicho rai, it's nicho rai. Essence means nicho rai. Nicho kahan pe Nicho, you can't see the nicho. Somebody said, somebody asked this question, Jain is being subsidized, subsidized by the corporate money. The essence is the corporate money. But that essence is invisible. It only sustains the existence. Actually, it shapes the existence of the, uh, of, of, of the nation. That is government. Okay? But if government, because of certain ideology, is overriding over the state, then it is a problem. So I'm already indicating three levels of problems. One is, na one is nation, nation and state, and the uh, uh, rip between the two, and another rip between the state and government. So it's a big problem, my friend. Do you want to restore nation? Yes. In what form do you want to restore nation in, in, in its benign egalitarian form? If you want to really restore this nation, what kind of state do you want to really invoke? Or you want to have control on? State which is not anti-people, which is not anti-minorities, uh, anti-margin. State which is responsible for actually meeting these aspirations that were promised. You know, this paradox of the nation is that it, what, what it promises in the beginning doesn't really fulfill later on. That is a paradox. We should really focus, this is how, this is not academic point, this is a point which should really become, you should be obsessed with this, asking these questions of paradox, everywhere. What is promised in the first instance is not delivered at the next instance. And that's the uh, uh, problem that we have. So we have nation state and state government. And what happens, people mistake, the common people mistake, uh, government as state. Government is not state. Government is only one, one apparatus of the state. Now we have to find out how to deal with this state. And it's a much larger question. I mean, you talk about the, uh, you, you talk about the sovereignty of the state. A state ac actually is defined in terms of its sovereignty from the external, dis external uh, danger. Most of the time, external danger is always constructed. Most of the time, external danger is always constructed. And we also have a very fake notion of sovereignty today because we are never sovereign, we are not autonomous in the neoliberal regime. Everything is decided and we just don't know uh, about that thing. The sovereignty of the, nation, sovereignty of the state, sovereignty of the nation is actually sustained, articulated by the state. But what about this graded sovereignty? Graded sovereignty is something which again Baba Sahib Ambedkar gave. We are all sovereign against each other. If you are not sovereign, Rohit wouldn't have really committed suicide. We are all sovereign. We actually require somebody inferior to you. This is a continuous inferiorization of people. So that you, will, you feel so sovereign. And I think if you really want to work within the boundaries of the parameters, the benign normative parameters of the nation, you have to really, through your argumentative capacity, collapse this graded sovereignty and make sovereignty seamless in terms of autonomy to take decision. I am not to be booed or I am not to be bullied, bullied by anybody's emotional definition of nation. I have own capacity to really define what is nation. How much nation really hurts me, attacks me, I will take, I will evaluate nation on everyday basis. It is not the definition of nation which is acquisitive, which actually brings out confession and commitment and confirmation from you. These are days where you are forced to commit, confessed. I mean, this is coercion. You cannot really actually define nation in terms of forcing somebody to uh, toe line. This is what it is. So nation is a very, very, I mean, um, that, this is a very limited point I'm making, but we have to be, you cannot take that acquisitive no, notion of nation or definition is not available to you. What is available to you is not even assertive, assertive notion of nation 
and I'll just spend, I'll just stop here after two minutes. What is the assertive notion of the state? And cricket is one example. They are asserting. They are arriving. Everybody scored one century. A sing singularization of nation. You actually identify as a single, pop, single hero with nation. That is assertion. But we should be interested in analyzing, interrogating to how much how much quality of life the nation has given to me. Nation as something within which the nation the nation state functions, the state functions. How much has it really changed, reshaped the social relationship which is which is actually regulating, guiding my everydayness, everyday practices. And this is not a, a this is, I mean, I mean, Swachh Bharat. Swachh Bharat, you say Swachh Bharat. Bharat is a nation, is it not? It is. But you have to ask one hard, concrete question. How is this Bharat possible? This Bharat is possible because there are 13 lakhs of scam, the sanitary workers who are making it Swachh. But you take pride in no, oh, Ahmedabad is first grade. I mean, it is not, but anyways, they say. Uh, on whose basis you are actually serializing? The very idea and identity of Bharat, such a Bharat, is based on somebody's concrete labor. And you just don't bother some people, some people die in manhole. You don't care about them. But this is the... So people always love in tautological understanding of nation, something which is generally given. What is at the very specific contextual level is almost ignored by everybody. So what can really embarrass the politicians or ruling or the governing class, if not the ruling class? I don't know ruling class ever has any emotional feeling. Do, have they ever cried? If somebody, have they ever, I have seen people crying, the corporate crying. I have not seen them. There is, I mean, there, that's why the invisibility of state, they have actually separated the social from the economic. Whatever is happening in the sphere of social, it is not their concern. They are very insensitive. <coughs> if it is census growing, last week, 3,000 crore rupees were withdrawn from the state, from the market, and census came down, the, the flashing 800 points. They are worried about that, but not about the social. So there is a, I mean, the state is municipal. The essence is actually hiding because there is a separation between the social and the material and the economic and the market. When we are thinking about realizing nation in its normativity, you must connect the social and the economic. And without that, I don't think you can really. Uh, uh, make any com comprehensive uh, understanding of nation. And so I think the, the concreteness, uh, the, 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 the ideology of nationalism, which actually necessarily glosses over the concreteness of the nation, has to be actually uh, criticized, interrogated, if not debunked. We have to debunk it finally. But the concrete, will always fly in the face of the tautological, the general, the, the, the given definition of nation. We want nation that will actually have some bearing, some bearing on the transformation of people's life. And uh, this has to be actually incorporated in the syllabuses. If not, it is there already, you must introduce your own. For this class, I think I introduced a small chapter on nation. I hope we'll have some discussion. Thank you very much.